Hello everyone, welcome to week two of R for Biologists. Uh, I hope you're all thoroughly reviewed on last week. Uh, we're going to be building on some of those skills, uh, but we'll be reviewing them as we go. Um, this week we're going to be dealing with visualization, specifically in wrapping um, map style data, which is useful for anybody in any sort of domain of biology. So everybody at some point has to make a map. And we're also going to be doing some ordination uh, in the lab. These are two very, very useful things, no matter what part of biology you're in. So I picked those. Uh, they also do a really good job of highlighting the two different grammar sets that we have in fly. There's kind of a plot family and a GG plot family. First, we're going to deal with uh, the plot family, and then we'll talk more about the differences as we go. But they're largely redundant. Um, if you really aren't comfortable in one, you can usually find something that is equivalent in the other. Uh, so I'm going to introduce both of them, because you'll probably run into one of them, uh, or both of them, at some point in time. But uh, it's useful to kind of have one that you're really good at. So with that, we'll start. Uh, the, the very easiest way to plot an R is how we're going to start, but I just remembered I should probably introduce a couple of things. First, you will not see this right now. <clears throat> you can ignore these, you do not have these files. I will talk about these later on. And these two files are the files that are in the chapter three of the textbook. So if you want to, you can go through and upload them. I don't have them on this computer um, simply because this is the lecture computer. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and upload those um, at any given time, <clears throat> we will not be using them for the first couple of uh, exercises, but we will get to them eventually. Additionally, I will clean this up because now it should be also similar to yours. Okay. And if you're concerned about not having this window up here, you can take notes at any time by going to file, new file, and you can either put a text file or an R script. We'll go more into this next week. Um, but if you want that pane to write stuff down or save code, that is there for you. Um, but we will, we will talk about that extensively next week because we'll do something extensively. What did you do to clear the Doberman? Oh, so if you want to clear things, this little sweeper is how you do it. Um, that'll clean your environments. If you want to clear out your terminal, it's Control L. I don't know why, but it is. <laughs> um, and then uh, anytime you see this little sweeper, you'll occasionally see it in like plots. I'm not going to show you that because that's not a rude surprise. Um, you'll, that'll clear out anything and stop you from having um, things sitting in memory hanging out. Okay, with that, we will actually start to plot. The easiest function that we could possibly use for plotting is plot. And we're going to use generic xy plotting. And you can see here that it is a very simple command. It just requires some sort of x, some sort of y, and it has a bunch of options that you can add on. And we'll talk about that more extensively here in a second. But let's give this a little test run. So we know this is a function because it has the, the parentheticals. <coughs> and just to demo this, I'm going to use seek so that we have a 0 through 10 in both x and y. So we should expect a diagonal line here. And seek is another function. We just need the beginning, the end, and what increment. And that'll be our x. And then we'll do the same for our y. Look familiar? Okay. And if we hit enter, this is one of the great things about our studio is visualization comes up automatically. If you were doing this on a command line, you'd have to do this, download the file, look at it, try again, continue doing it that way. It's very nice to be able to prototype your graphing on an RStudio instance because it pops up right away. It's very, very convenient to see. If you want to make this bigger, which we can do for right now, you can resize that and it will automatically resize. Okay, so that was super basic <clears throat> and let's build on that a little bit. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is this gives you by default circles, which is the points. And if we want to change that, we can hit the up arrow, which will bring up our last uh, command. And we can add some parameters here. Now, while plot is the most basic of the plotting functions, it is also one of the worst documented, in my opinion. There's a lot of things that are built in there that aren't obviously laid out. 
Um, you want to help. It gives you x, y, kind of points to a type, main, sub, a couple of these, but there's so many more. And a lot of times you just end up having to Google them. I'll give you a couple here that I use, uh, but do know that plot has a lot more built in than it actually explains. Again, I don't know why this is, why they didn't fully document it, or if it was documented and then extended. Um, but this is one of those that there's a lot of built in things that aren't well described. However, let's use this type one and change it from points to doing lines, just to get back into the practice of using parameter. And in this case, we want to use L. Make sure that L is in quotations because it does need to know that that is a uh, uh, scalar, not a variable name. If we do this, it gives us a line. <coughs> we can also do B, which is both, and you get very, very, very basic. So a couple of things that this graph is missing that everybody points to you and it wants you to have on your, on your posters, et cetera, are labeling your axes, labeling your main, um, getting some more information on there. And these are also ones that are documented. So main is your title. So let's call this the title. And this also allows you to set your axes, which is really, really helpful. Plot will try to predict what it wants the axes to be, but you can set them with xlib equals, and you're gonna have to give it two numbers, a beginning and an end. So we have to give it as a vector, which is why we have this C. Told you we'd be using this guy a lot. And then we can do the same thing for ylim. And just for fun, you can also change the color, which is col. And I'm going to use dark blue. And you can see this change in my y limits and my x limits it allows me to have more space if I wanted to put something in there and inside, etc. Um, and it also allows me to check, uh, change the color. I do mention this later in the notes, but I'll mention it now. Um, there are a bunch of built-in colors in R. I did not just make up dark blue, it is actually a known thing. If you Google colors in R, it'll bring up the web page that has them all listed with a nice little picture of what color it is. Super, super handy. Um, it is also in the uh, textbook notes for uh, chapter three. And <clears throat> that'll at least give you an idea of where uh, to look for different colors if you're trying to make for your graphs. But dark blue is pretty easy to remember. So that's one I always kind of default to. Now, Plot has a bunch of things that are in the family that are called plot. Uh, one of them that's really useful to have is AB line. And an AB line is just a line where you define A and B when in the equation of uh, what is it's the slope and intercepts. So let's look up AB line first. Always a good plan. So A and B are the intercepts, so you can define where you want them to be, and it'll automatically calculate slope. And then there are some other values in here that I've honestly never really used. Um, for things that are a little bit more uh, complicated than just putting in a line with intercepts, I usually use a different function, um, one that's more built for what I'm doing. But for now, let's just try this. Use an intercept of zero. Readable, and I'll make that color. And you see that it puts the line directly over where I had it before. I'll show you the white. This is an easy way if you want to put trend lines on, if you want to put um, any sort of demarcation or uh, cutoff value. This is a good way to without actually having to worry about adding it into your graph. Uh, and this is compatible with any of the plot family types. It'll just plot right over it. Okay, so to do something a little bit more complicated, uh, let's load in our blast table from last week so that we actually have some data. And again, 
if you haven't uploaded it, it should be right here. Make sure that it is visible and that you note where you are. Last week, there was a lot of problems with this. If it does not say home, uh, you are going to have to make sure that your present working directory matches this. So who remembers how to see what their present working directory is? Get WD. And this will tell me that I'm in home and guest user. This is equivalent to the, the word home. Um, it's just a Unix rename. If you have something after this that says something like R or textbook or anything like that, you're going to have to change your um, uh, your working directory. So just real quick, if I were in, say, this folder, there's nothing in here. It's just where things get installed. I'm now in R x86, all of that. How do I go about setting my work directory? Who remembers that function? Set WD. And then I would do home, and you can tab complete through this, which is really, really helpful. And I'm in guest user. R is the next one here. And then x86. So I could then hit enter, and it would put me in this folder, so I could use this folder as my working directory. Now, I don't have anything in here. So I'm not going to do this, um, but I just did want to show that because that was a very common problem last week. So let's make sure we're here. Let's see this? Okay. So we're going to call this table, and to read in a data frame, which is what this is. Does anybody remember what that function was called? This is a data frame, not a matrix. So we wouldn't use as matrix, but when we were loading in a matrix, we did as matrix and then read table. And in here, we want to define our file. Do we need to use this keyboard? And again, I'm going to use tab complete. Tab complete is going to stop you from having any sort of errors in typing that file. It will also confirm that that file is where or thinks it is. So if you are not, if you did not correct your um, working directory, that would not get tab complete. So that's a good double check to have. Tab complete as much as possible. And just like last week, we know this was a uh, header. And we're going to use the same thing as last week as well, with row names equal to one. If we wanted to see that if this had a header or not, we could click this file right here. And it would show up here and we can see that it has a bunch of text at the top, meaning that it does have a header. This does not mean it's loading into R, it just means we're looking at the file. So as soon as we hit this, we see it comes up in our environment section and it gives us a number of observations with variables, which is the indication that it is in fact a data frame. And if we want to look at how this is look, or stored in R, we can click on this. And it's a lot prettier. Now we have row names and columns, and we can actually see the data. So this is what it looks like if you're reading it in from R, and then this is what it looks like if you're reading it from the text. Does that make a little bit of sense? <clears throat> so something that's very useful when you're, you're doing uh, tables is, or any data frame is uh, this. Uh, for histograms. And hist is a uh, function just like any other. So what's the first thing we should do? Question. Yep. Oop. Do it work via that. And ignore this rasters thing I have. And hist just wants some sort of vector of values. What's an easy vector of values in the table? Since a table is a vector of vectors, we can use columns or rows. In this case, we probably want to use columns because that's all going to be the same kind of data, whereas rows are going to be mixed data and will cause problems. So if we wanted to know all of the breakdown for, say, bit scores through this entire file to get an idea of the quality of this file, we could use a histogram. And we could feed it a vector values, which is our column for bit score. So what this looks like is hist. 
and then we want to use the table. And there's two different ways we can do this. We can either call up our column like we did last week, or we can do something that we learned in the lab, which is using the dollar sign. That dollar sign will break down um, the different parts of that variable. That is an object, it is a data, or a data frame. It has um, a bunch of columns that you can individually reference that we did last week when we did the quotes. And if you put the dollar sign, it allows you to select any of the subsets. And here we can actually put this for it. The less you have to physically type in, the less likely you're gonna have an error. And it's just a good uh, skill to know. So if you do this, just like plot, it automatically produces us a bit score. It gives us a kind of terrible title um, and tries to give us some sort of uh, X label and Y label that we may want to change. And additionally, it also has some sort of guess at what kind of breakpoints you want to use. You may want different ones if these bins might not be useful for you. So if we look back at help, we can see that breaks is the next most common one. And we can either give it a vector of breakpoints, single number of cells. There's a bunch of different ways to define this. So let's give this a whirl real quick. And we want to make sure that we're inside the histogram uh, parentheses. So you can see that's highlighting the outsides. And we'll add breaks equal. And we're going to use our good friend seek again to give it a vector of zero through 900. And let's go with bin size one. And you can see that this is breaking it down very, very small. One of the things people notice is this continues past the, the range and that's because this is where the uh, automatic labeling goes. We can change that very easily. The up arrow is your friend. You can change things very quickly. And we can increase those step. And you can see this is pretty flexible. What's nice about this is this also is a version of plot family. So the same things in our involved here. So you can use call, you can use main, you can use xlab, you can use xlim. These are all shared parameters in any of the plot family, which is what's nice. If you can identify something as plot family, you can guess at a lot of the things that are available in that uh, context to make a graph right here. Okay, very basic for plot. You can go really far doing this. And if you run into other things like you want to do linear regressions or you want to do scatter plots, all of that is very, very easy to figure out from just what you learned from now.